Hey everyone, thank you for watching. In today's video, I'm really excited to do because it's going to be a follow-up video. I'm going to be following up from a video I posted last November called Eight Brands I Want to Try in 2018. So I'm excited to do this follow-up video. I'm going to be chatting about the eight brands that I featured in that video, all brands that I had not tried anything from yet. And I was like, 2018 is going to be the year that I try these. I have not tried all of them. And I'm not going to lie. Uh, I'm kind of surprised. But if you would like to see my follow-up for eight brands I wanted to try in 2018, I want to go ahead and get started. Alrighty, so I had filmed seven brands I wanted to try in 2017, and that video went over really well, and so I decided I'm going to do it again for 2018. So I filmed the eight brands I want to try in 2018. You have to let me know if you want to see brands I want to try in 2019. I feel like I'm trying more and more brands these days, but also more and more brands keep popping up, so I could I could probably come up with quite a few. I typically also like to do uh, eight brands I think you should try in 2018. I did that video and I'm planning to do a video of brands I think that you should try in 2019 as well. But it was really funny. I posted this video in late November last year. I'm trying to get my list out here. I posted this video in late November of last year. I'll have it linked down below, of course. And it was so funny. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's always so funny to watch from past videos. It kind of cracked me up. Uh, and it also reminded me um, of a sweater that I have apparently lost. And I'm going to go try to find that sweater again. Uh, but it was just so funny listening to me talk about these brands. Because some of them I was like, oh my gosh, they're like my favorite brands right now. Or oh my gosh, I'm super into them right now. And there was so many that I was like, hmm, did you forget you put that on your list, girl? Or what are you doing? Because there's multiple that I have not tried in 2018. I was like, girl, you had an entire year and you still didn't do it? Like, that's embarrassing. But, alrighty. First up, first brand that I mentioned was Colored Rain. And I am very excited to say that I did try out Colored Rain in 2018. We're one for one. It's gonna go downhill from here. So actually what I tried first was one of their smaller eyeshadow palettes. This is their very cute sh eyeshadow palette. It has six shades inside and then also a little mirror. They came out with like d different color schemes of these. And I got the purple one. And then I also have the Queen of Hearts palette. This one was actually sent to me from a subscriber. And wow, this palette was so hard to get. I remember when I opened it up, I was like, a, how did you even get that? But then B, how did you get that? And then think to send it to me. I was seriously shocked and blown away. This is what the palette looks like. It has a little bit of the mirrored packaging. This palette was, everybody was so excited for it. It kept selling out. There was like two or three times that I tried to buy it and it just did not work out for me. So um, I have two different palettes here from Color Green in my collection. I like both the palettes. Uh, I think that I actually like Queen of Hearts better than I do the Berry Cute, which is odd for me because, especially as of right now, I'm typically going for the smaller palettes. That's kind of what I'm preferring, but I'd say between the two, I still like the Queen of Hearts. I just feel like I've liked a lot of the looks that I've done more with that palette. I really can't say though that it became like a new favorite brand of mine. I liked the Queen of Heart palette. Queen of Hearts palette, but again, this was like a $52 or $54 eyeshadow palette. I can't think off the top of my head, but it was a very expensive eyeshadow palette, and I liked it, and I thought it was good, but I wasn't like, yes, that's that should have been selling out the whole time. Like, I just didn't get those kind of vibes from it, and that could be a very unpopular opinion. I know a lot of people really like Color Drain. Um, like I said, I do like both of the palettes, but I just wasn't like so super hyped up, you know? But I was able to try out the brand in 2018. I would love to know if you guys have tried anything from Color Drain as well. Alrighty, and here's where we go downhill, because the second brand that I mentioned I have not tried, and that is Zoeva Beauty. <sighs> Dang it, I, I'm not gonna lie, I kind of forgot that I put this on my list because maybe that would have convinced me. There was a palette, like, mm, I wanna say it was more towards like the beginning of the year or in the spring. There was a palette that came out and I, I was on the website and I had it in my cart. I'm fairly confident I touched on this in a Willie Bite video at some point, but it was like $9 for shipping and it said it was gonna take like two weeks to get to me or something like that. And I was just like, oh, that is not the life I wanna live. And I know, I know, I know, I can hear you now. I know that's not a great thing. And especially for like international customers and if you're trying to buy things from the US, like that's a totally not a fun thing to go through. And I I understand that. But uh, I'm also just, just trying to be honest here. So I remember that happening and I didn't go for it. And then I feel like all the other releases that I've seen from Zoeva, I just haven't been like, ah, I absolutely need that type thing. Like it just, I don't do the double take a lot with a lot of their releases. Uh, what I want to try the most though, I think, is their brushes. And I know 
I think when I talked about them in a past Billy Bite video, a lot of people were recommending their brushes to me. So that's kind of what I've been interested in trying. But then at the same time, I have so many brushes that it just seems crazy to me to buy like full brush sets at the moment. So I still haven't done it. I'm, I'm kind of mad. At, this is like the one brand that I'm really mad at myself that I haven't purchased from yet. So, hmm, that hurts. All right, we're one for two, one for two. Oh good, look, next, next one. Also haven't tried anything from, mm, rough. But this is, okay, okay, let me just tell you, let me just tell you. This is Best Damn Beauty. So when I talked about it, because I, I went back and I was watching my video from, from last year, and I was talking about Best Damn Beauty, that it's a brand that was started by the YouTuber Nicole Guerrero, but I felt like I never heard Nicole talk about these products or even really use these products. Like every once in a while, she'll sporadically sneak a product in, and I didn't even know for the first, like, probably like the first year, I think I said, of watching Nicole Guerrero, that she even owned a kind of like a skincare focused brand because she never talked about it. I didn't see it being promoted at all. And so when I finally figured it out, I was like, oh, I would really like to get something. I really like Nicole Guerrero. I've been watching her for many, many years. Um, and I, I really like her and I would like to support, but it's just like one of those weird things where I feel like nobody talks about it. And including the owner who in last year's video, I was like, we're all about self-promotion these days. Everybody's self-promoting. I sell this, I sell that. Watch my YouTube videos. You know, even in last year's video, I was like, I'm a published author, buy my books. And I put like a screenshot of my book on the, in the video and I was like, yeah, you go girl. But so I don't know, I just think it's weird. So it's kind of one of those things where I just never felt like really amped to try it. It wasn't like, oh, this is coming out or this is being promoted. I really want to give it a shot. I just feel like I don't hear about it a lot. So I would love to know if you guys have heard of Best Damn Beauty. Um, I don't know, maybe just if you watch Nicole Guerrero in general, but, or if you feel the same way as me that I actually went to the website because I was like, maybe it's not even around anymore. Like maybe I have a valid reason that I didn't try it in 2018. It's because it's not around anymore, but the website is still up. But it's interesting to look at the pictures of Nicole because I feel like they're older photos because I've been following her for so long. I feel like they're definitely older photos of Nicole. So. I don't know, kind of odd. Alrighty, so we are one for three. Very good, very good. All right, next up though, here we go, here we go. Bold Face, Bold Face Lashes. I did try out Bold Face Lashes in 2018. I made a purchase from the website. I think it was earlier on in the year. I can't remember for sure, but I purchased like three, three different lashes. I want to say. Um, so I have tried out the, the Bold Face Lashes. I think they still only have lashes at this time. I'll have the websites listed down below. Um, but I was really interested th in these lashes. I was hearing some people talk about them. I was seeing their Instagram. They looked really interesting to me. They were kind of a newer company at the time that I was finding them. And I thought their lashes were okay. They're only like nine or $10. They're, they're more affordable for lashes, especially kind of what I'm into these days. Um, what do I even have? I think I have Lily lashes on today, which those are more pricey. Um, so they're more affordable at the $9. You can only get them on their website, which, you know, sometimes can get a little tough. Um, you know, just kind of making like impulse purchases and all of that. That's something that Sephora and Alta are good for. You make impulse purchases over there. That's for sure. Um, I liked their lashes, but I didn't necessarily love them. I didn't like the way that they felt. Like they almost just felt, I don't know how to describe. I don't know how to describe it, so I'm not even gonna try. But I didn't love the way that they felt. And there was a couple different styles that I tried and I just didn't feel like I found like my style, my type of lash with them. Um, so that's really the only time that I've tried them out. And I mean, I'm not saying like don't try them or like I think they're bad. I just I think the main thing was that I tried a handful of different styles from them and I just didn't feel like I was finding my kind of lash. And I have a lot of my kind of lashes. So that was kind of that one, but I did try them out. So we're now two for four. So good, good, two for four. Next up though, next up, this was so funny because I saw this pop up. Um, like I kind of hovered over my thumbnail and they play like a little snippet of the video and I saw the brand logo come in and I was like, what? I had already tried that brand by the time this video came up. No, I haven't, but it's funny because I mentioned Lawless Beauty in that video and that really cracked me up because I enjoy Lawless Beauty so much. I feel like I talk about the brand quite a bit and I have definitely gone on to try Lawless Beauty. So it was really funny to see, but it was, it was, it was interesting to hear 
last year me talk about wanting to try Lawless Beauty and why I was so interested talking about Annie Lawless, the creator of the brand, and kind of why she started it, a little bit about her background, and me just saying, I just find this brand interesting. I'm just curious to try it. Um, you know, I'm just kind of drawn to it. There are certain brands that we're drawn to, there's certain brands that we're not drawn to, um, and it doesn't make any brand better or worse for any for you know, any one person, it's just we're all as individuals, we're drawn to different things. And for whatever reason, from the beginning, I was drawn to Lawless Beauty and I just thought that was so funny. So yes, I have gone on to try a lot from Lawless Beauty. I clearly really enjoy their lipsticks. To be fair, I did get some of these sent to me in PR, but I have bought Lawless Beauty liquid lipsticks myself. And these are pricey lipsticks. These are $25 per lipstick. So the lipsticks that I've purchased, I've purchased during the Sephora sales because I want a discount on a $25 lipstick. But the lipsticks are so nice. I highly, I'm always recommending these lipsticks and I really highly do recommend them. Some of my favorite shades are George, which is a really beautiful uh, nude. Leo is a really nice peachy nude. And then Romeo, if you like deeper colors, Romeo is a really beautiful deep red and I think it is so gorgeous. Um, this was a, definitely a really pretty fall color. Uh, but yeah, those are the liquid lipsticks. And then most recently, I do have the setting powders. These were both sent to me. Uh, I did go on to purchase the foundation myself, though. And the foundation was the one thing I did not enjoy from Lawless Beauty. It was, like, too much for me. Even with, like, dry, drier skin. I was, I was trying it in the summer, so I wasn't, like, super dry like I tend to get in the winter. But I still looked really kind of like greasy at the end of the day after I was wearing it and it broke up on me. So I did purchase the foundation myself. I did actually end up returning it, but Annie also sent over the setting powders, the classic translucent powder and the brightening powder. I have been nonstop using the brightening powder. I'm loving it so much. I would highly recommend it. Or if brightening is not your thing, the classic would probably be great too. And I think there is also one for deeper skin tones, um, which she did not send me, which I just that is totally okay because um, I would just have to pop it into a giveaway or something but I really do like the setting powders. I just was talking about the eyeshadow palette that they're coming out with in a recent Will I Buy video and I said I was so excited for it but it just really, I just thought it was really funny listening to me talk about how excited I was for this new brand on the horizon. I think they only had the liquid lipsticks and I don't even know if they were at Sephora yet when I was chatting about this last year but it just kind of shows that I was always really interested in it. So I thought that was kind of funny. I think we are three for five and uh, we're about to hit the fourth brand that I've tried. I'm very excited about this. This was Jouer Cosmetics. And I, I was saying in my video last year, you know, I can't believe it. This is a bigger brand. A lot of people talk about it. A lot of influencers have codes with Jouer and I'm over here not trying anything yet from Jouer, but I finally did. So I have a couple different items here. So the first one, I actually, I think I purchased this one on the Beautylish website. This was the Coquette Blush Duo. Sorry, you can see my shadows. I still need to get into the to the swing of things of trying to film like several hours earlier with the sun setting. I'm gonna get into it. And then right when I get into it, we're gonna time change again. And I'm gonna have to try to adjust again. That's okay, that's all right. All right, but this is the Jouer Blush uh, Bouquet, I think is what they call them. And I got this from Beautylish and I was so impressed with it. And then shortly after that, they came into Sephora and I was very excited. So in my last uh, Sephora sale, I actually picked up the Adore Blush Bouquet. I highly recommend these. They have like four, four or five maybe different ones. Highly recommend these. I mean, obviously I love the Coquette. I had to go on to purchase the Adore, which I adore. And then I also picked up their new concealer. So this is a newer product to them. This is their Essential High Coverage Liquid Concealer. I did just purchase it, so I've only tried it out like three times or something like that now, but I really, really like it so far. So I'm gonna keep testing it out so I can get my review put together. But I think it definitely helped, uh, A, that I discovered Beautylish and that I liked ordering from Beautylish. So that was a plus, but definitely also them coming into Sephora. You know, sometimes I feel bad about it. Um, you know, about, I, I tend to gravitate towards brands with Sephora and Ulta, but one thing that I always try to say here on my channel is I'm just a regular old girl. I am not like a lot of other YouTubers who have a lot of money and can just go on and place buku amount of orders. You know, I see people doing the videos of, you know, I, I went out and purchased this entire collection and I'm going to do all this. I went out and purchased all of the most high, high rated products on Sephora and I'm going to try them all out. I can't do that. I, I can't just go out and buy all these different things. 
um, because I just that's just not in my in my budget at the moment so when I'm buying makeup I'm buying it because I truly want to buy it and it just helps me to be able to order from sites like Sephora and Alta I get a lot of gift cards for those websites they're typically on Ebates so I'm getting some sort of cash back they have the rewards programs uh, and also in the US here we can return makeup if things don't work for us again I know that that's not everywhere but you know, some of your countries don't have the issues our countries do either. Um, but we can return our makeup in the U.S. But a lot of smaller brands or if you're just ordering from websites, you can't do that. So I like to order from Sephora Alta because I at least know if something is just terrible, does not work out for me at all, I can return it. So, you know, maybe one day I'll be in a different position where I can go on to an indie brand's website and order hundreds of dollars worth of makeup for the simple Thing of being able to test it for a YouTube video but at that point I am not there and I am still purchasing makeup that I genuinely want I want in my collection I want to try and it's never just for a video for me so I just thought I'd mention that that has not changed <laughs> from last November <laughs> alrighty so the next brand on my list is another brand that I did not try in 2018 this is Besame Cosmetics oh okay so there's been a couple of releases from Besame Cosmetics that I have seen and I have I have wanted to be interested in. I feel like I kind of feel some of the same ways about Besme as I have of Zoeva, where I want to try the brand, I want to try the products, but there's just not enough that is catching my attention, that is making me say, really go for it. And that is making me say, I'll pay for the shipping, I'll pay the extra shipping, I'll wait a long time. Like I just don't get as excited as I do about some other products, if that makes sense. The more recent things that came out from Besame Cosmetics was like the Peter Pan collaboration. Again, I, I chatted about this in a Billy Bite video, but it was all like mermaids and it just, nothing really called to me from that collection. So I have not made a purchase there either. Oh, it's kind of a bummer looking back because I, I was so excited to try some of these brands, but again, I really want to, to not buy just to buy. I, I really want to stay firm on that. I think it's funny because looking back last year, I can see myself when I'm talking about some of these brands, especially the Zoeva, that I'm almost kind of afraid to say. I don't want to, you know, just be making any sort of purchases outside of Sephora and Alta because of the reasons I listed earlier. Because even who I was last year, I was a little bit more embarrassed to kind of just be upfront about certain things. And I feel like 2018, I really kind of came out of that shell here on my channel. I've done a lot more personal videos on my channel. I've talked about a lot of, you know, personal items and stuff from my past and how that's brought me to who I am today. And from the support that other people have shown me, people watching this video, the messages, because of your support and feedback, I don't feel embarrassed anymore. You know, I'm just like, you know what? I am who I am. Like, this is who I am. This is this is what's going on in my life right now. And uh, I'm not going to be embarrassed over something, especially something like buying makeup. Like, I, I will not be. So, thank you. Thank you guys. And thank you for the continued support and, and comments. I can see a lot of growth in myself from watching that video from last November. And uh, it is really, really very much appreciate it so thank you um but no unfortunately i have not tried anything yet from best of my cosmetics i hope that one day there is something that catches my attention because just like i was saying in the last video in last year's video um you know i really like the packaging i like that kind of vintage feel to them uh, i think the brand is really interesting you know I've, I've looked up some some different things about the brand i think it's very interesting and hopefully hopefully there'll be a time where something catches my attention enough that i want to go ahead and purchase it and then the eighth and final brand is one that I was able to try and I'm so happy about it. That is Laura Geller. This is what I have tried from Laura Geller. I did get the Gilded Highlight, the Gilded Honey Highlighter. I did pick up the mini of this guy and I'm very excited that I have it. I very much like this. So funny watching last year's video and hear me explain about there was times I went into Ulta and I was holding this highlight in my tiny baby hands and then by the time I got to the checkout, I put the highlight down. Where'd the highlight go? And I didn't purchase it but I finally got it when the mini came out that is when I snapped it up right away because with highlighters sometimes it's real tough spending more money on highlighters and buying a full-size highlighter and I know that I'm never hitting pan on probably any highlighters in my entire collection so it's just harder I would rather purchase minis when this mini came out for $12 I was like come to me 
yes, I will purchase you. And I picked this one up from Ulta. I'm very happy I did. I really like the Gilded Honey Highlight. It's not too gold on me. That was another kind of one of my worries. I thought it was going to be too gold. It's not. I think it's really beautiful and that blends out really nicely on the skin. Doesn't show a lot of texture. So I'm very glad that I have tried it, Laura Geller. And especially Gilded Honey because that was kind of like the focus on last year's video as well. I wanted to try this highlight out so badly and I finally did. But that is going to wrap it up for today's video. So out of the eight brands I wanted to try in 2018, I have tried five. So so, I mean, hey, that's pretty good. There was just a few in there um, that I haven't yet tried, but I would love to know what you thought of all the different brands and what I had to say. Were there any brands that you were kind of hoping that you wanted to try in 2018? Did anyone else kind of take on this challenge from last year? Uh, I would love to know. And would you like to see this style of video for 2019? I would also love to know that in the comments down below. But thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this follow-up video. Make sure to give it a thumbs up if you did. I hope that you also consider subscribing before you go, and I'll catch you guys in tomorrow's video.